five mark GCSE question. As you guys can see from the screenshot, it's a cheeky five marker that most students failed to do because there's a question that will come up towards the end of the paper and they see all this yapperoonies and a picture. They don't want to do it. But guys, if you're in the middle of your main exam, you can't have that attitude. So let's get at least, if we have this kind of attitude, a couple of marks. But really, we should be aiming for all of them. I got you guys. So it says the diagram shows two shaded shapes, A and B. Shape A is formed by removing a sector of a circle with radius 3x minus 1 from a sector of a circle of radius 5x minus 1. So they're saying this shaded shape A is found by taking this smaller sector where the radius is 3x minus 1 from this larger sector which has radius 5x minus 1 because 3x minus 1 plus 2x is 5x minus 1. Okay, that makes sense. Shape B is just a circle with diameter 2 minus 2x. The area of shape A is equal to the area of shape B. Find the value of x. Now, this is a non-calculated paper question. Well, my assumption is anyway, because there's 45 degrees, you guys need to know your... Uh, well, actually, no, we're not even doing trig ratios or anything like that, but something like this for sure could come up in a non-calc paper. So let's look at how we can work out the area of shape A. We need to remind ourselves of how we work out the area of sectors. Now, a sector is just a fraction of a full circle, okay? So what you're saying is, based on this angle, what fraction of a full circle is it? Well, a full circle is 360 degrees. We're doing 45 over 360 degrees. Yeah, so that's the fraction it is. And that's going to give us 8, well, 1 eighth, yeah? Because uh, 45 times uh, 2 is 90. And then 90 times 4 gives you 360, and 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so to work out A, we're going to do this big sector, that area, minus the smaller one. So, we've already said what fraction of the full circle it is. We now need to just multiply by pi r squared. Pi times the radius, the big circle, is 5x minus 1 squared. And from there, we are going to subtract the exact same thing, but for the smaller circle, which is also 45 over 360 times pi times the smaller radius, which is 3x minus 1 squared. Now from here, what's the best way to kind of simplify everything? Well, let's first write this as 1 8th. So 1 8th pi, and then we have 5x minus 1 squared minus 1 8th pi. 3x minus 1 squared. Actually, before I do any kind of major simplification, let's just go ahead and talk about uh, b. That's just pi r squared. Yes, yeah, so we have pi times the radius. Now, we have to be careful. They gave us the diameter, so we need to half that to get the radius, which is 1 minus x. Half of 2, 1 minus half of 2, 1. We just don't need to write that. Pi r squared. And these two things are the exact same. So, we're going to say 1 eighth pi 5x minus 1 squared minus 1 eighth pi 3x minus 1 squared equals pi lots of 1 minus x squared. Now we can do some cheeky simplification here because what do you notice in every single term? There is a pi. We can divide through by pi, which basically cancels them out. So let's cross them out. Now what's the other thing you guys should be thinking about doing to make this look a lot nicer. It's the 1 8th. We don't like the 8s. Okay, let's get rid of these fractions by multiplying through by 8. Remember, a fraction just means divide. So dividing by 8, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to times by 8 everywhere. So these all go. So what do we get? We have 5x minus 1 squared minus 3x minus 1 squared is 8 lots of this. Okay, now we just need to expand everything, all right? Now there's a cheeky, quick way to expanding squared brackets. Let me show you guys how it looks. So you square this first term, 5x times 5x, 5 squared is 25, then we have x squared. Then you multiply these together, 5x times minus 1 is minus 5x, you double it, is minus 10x. And then you square the last number, 
1. Yeah, whether it's plus or minus doesn't matter because when you square it, it just becomes positive. Now, just to save space, guys, I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I'm going to write underneath and we're going to subtract. Okay, so 3x, when you square that, is 9x squared. Multiply these together is minus 3x. Double it is minus 6x. And then we have again this. And then we're going to subtract them. 25x squared minus 9x squared is 16x squared. Now here you have to be careful. Minus 10 minus minus 6. Minus 10. The double minus is plus. So it's minus 10 plus 6. Minus 10 plus 6 is minus 4x. And here the 1's cancel. 1 minus 1. Here we have 8 lots of... Okay, let's do the same thing. Square the first number. 1. Multiply these together is minus x. Double it minus 2x, and then you square the last thing, x squared. And then we just expand all that out. So we get 8, we get minus uh, 16x, then we get plus 8x squared, which is quite nice. So what I'm going to very quickly do, guys, is I'm just going to clear this up until this point, and then we're going to continue our working. Let's go. So, next thing we're going to do to solve this is we're going to bring the smaller x squareds over to the larger one. So a positive 8x squared over here is going to be a minus 8x squared. That's dealt with. Minus 16x on the other side is going to become a plus 16x. And this positive 8 on the other side is going to be minus 8. And then we're going to be left with equals 0. Yeah, all that's going to be 0. 16 minus... 8 is 8, eggs squared, minus 4 plus 16, or 16 minus 4 is 12, eggs, and then we just have that minus 8, is 0. Now this obviously looks horrible, but we can make our lives easier by dividing through by a number. Yeah, I can divide through by 4, is the largest number that goes into every single number here. 8 divided by 4 is 2, eggs squared. Then we get plus 3 eggs, and then here we're going to get minus 2 is 0. And here is where we say, bun AC, we can do this factorizing a lot easier than that. 1 multiplies by itself to give you 2x squared is 2x and x. What multiplies by itself to give you 2, again, is 2 and 1. The 2 can't go here because there's another 2, so it's going to be 2 and 1. Here, 2 times 2 gives me 4x. This gives me 1x. How does 4x and 1x make 3x? So if we have plus 4 minus 1. Plus 4 minus 1. Nice. So two things multiply to give you 0. Either this is 0. 2x minus 1 is 0. Or x plus 2 is 0. This one's nice and easy to solve. A plus 2 on this side is minus 2. But let's think about it. x, that being 2x, x can't be negative. Okay, so x has to be positive. So our only solution here is we're going to add 1 there. We get 2x is 1, and then we divide both sides by 2. There's your answer. x is 1 half. And there we go, guys. We finally get our answer for 5 marks. What do you guys think? Do you think 5 marks is generous? Do you think it's stingy? Let me know, because this was a past exam question. But guys, if you learned something today, hit the like button. Subscribe for more content like this, and you can head over to my Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit questions and discuss more maths. Links in the description. And if you want to join my GCSE maths courses, links to that is also in the description. And also, I am running Easter Revision courses for you guys in April. See you guys in the next video. Nice.